Hi all, a very interesting game was played in round 10 of the FIDE Grand Prix. Lenia Domingue Perez 2751 was playing white against Fabiano Caruana. So I think the game is very interesting from a pawn structure perspective. How can we uh, have a nice pawn structure for ourselves and a miserable one for the opponent? And one of the most miserable pawn structures uh, comes out of the Benoni potentially, the son of sorrow. Uh, which is not so popular nowadays. Uh, I'll just quickly show you that sort of pawn structure to show you what I mean. The Benoni, uh, like this, the modern Benoni in particular, um, is thought not to be that great because white has a space advantage. And e4, in conjunction with maneuvers like this to target d6, is thought to be nice. So, anyway, you'll see in relation to this game so some interesting ideas to try and inflict such a structure on the opponent. Uh, Lenia Domingo Perez played c4 and Fabiano played symmetrically here c5, g3, g6, both sides being chateau. Now after knight c3, I think a lot of uh, club players would play for the kind of bot for next system to try and, although compromising d5, to try and keep the bind on d4 here. Uh, this is a very interesting game for a very interesting system against the English opening setup here. Uh, black here keeps the symmetry up one more move so perfectly symmetrical right now rook b1 and as though white's preparing the standard space gain on the queen side first interesting decision here in live book actually the most common moves here d6 e6 knight f6 but there's a move with 11 games here the others are, are more than that which is b6 so immediately black is offering the opportunity if white wants to double the pawns I don't think this is very good at all though here because it helps reinforce black's control of d4 there's weakened light squares and furthermore uh, to, for d4 control knight here to here might be more appropriate than putting knight there and this would be a very nice iron grip on d4 I think fully more than fully compensating for the double pawns uh, so white didn't really want to go for that. White played a3, carrying on this queenside space uh, plan. Now we see bishop b7, b4. So there's immediate threat of taking here using that pin. d6, simply d6. The pin here uh, is not a killer pin. If b5, uh, even well, no, there's only one move here, but it's enough. Knight a5 just to protect against bishop takes b7. So that's not a problem here. Knight a5. And if taking here again, we get control of d4. So bishop b2 was played. And now Fabiano plays e6, move e6. And this has a very nice idea, potentially, that black wants to, uh, in theory, stretch out with d5 and potentially d4, if given the chance, to establish uh, a spatial advantage. Uh, so very interesting position. And here, perhaps white should have just played uh, a routine sort of move maybe d3 maybe taking maybe taking now is not so bad or maybe knight h3 just to try and control d5 like that but actually knight b5 was played offering the exchange of dark square bishops I think already after this technically speaking from an engine perspective black's already doing uh, very well here so black just exchanges off the bishops and now just plays knight g e7 here. Okay, it looks as though this might be useful to get rid of that potentially useful bishop on the dark squares. But is white really in a position to exploit that? White plays e3 here. And it gives the idea that maybe d4 is going to be handy. Karana just castled. Now the problem with d4 here, if it was played, Let's have a look. If d4 was played there, I mean, black can just take on d4. And whatever way white plays this position, I think he ends up with not a very comfortable pawn structure, actually. e takes, d5 fixes d4, and black is going to play moves like knight f5. So this could be very unpleasant, this position, with d4 quite vulnerable. And with bishop a6 on the cards, so so here, so here or a6. Uh, this this d4 pawn is vulnerable, so it looks as though that's quite convincing. That really, um, you know, rook d2. This is not not brilliant for white. Uh, 
so white didn't play d4 there white actually uh, played knight f3 and a very interesting concept now played by Fabiano he plays knight e5 so exploiting the pin now on f3 to g2 d3 uh, was played here uh, if d4 I think um, actually knight takes c4 there ouch yeah so d3 that's another point that the c4 pawn was attacked there so it's having to waste time I mean it's it's quite an unpleasant position after knight e5 that is actually uh, in this position that's that's one of the strongest moves in the position uh, apparently just just to use that to, to hit c4 and if taking this is just miserable uh, for white you know getting that light square bishop uh, is is very pleasant for black this sort of position uh, so yeah and white's forfeiting casting rights so white played this d3 and now we see going back to when, what was originally at the start of the video I mentioned it would be nice to inflict uh, a kind of passive uh, squashed pawn structure on the opponent and Fabiano seems to achieve that now right now with giving up his bishop uh, so he's actually damaging white's control of d4 here after bishop takes uh, that without that knight and this knight here black now plays d5 and has got a very interesting uh, very interesting uh, threats here I don't think even white can easily r routinely just castle here in this position because again there's pressure on c4 if white just castled routinely d takes c4 is possible sacking the exchange if needed this, this is just horrible this position for white uh, this this position has got great prospects for black after knight f3 it's uh it's not very uh pleasant at all uh so like this if rook well the queen's attacked pardon me so we can even win back the exchange we've created a load of weaknesses so it's not brilliant to win the exchange just want to demonstrate that here so castling you know d takes is not very pleasant at all so look at this again and if we don't take here um, say taking here then black can take here and the bishops hanging so then knight takes c4 so white can't even routinely castle basically in this position after d5 it seems this is very very energetic stuff uh, white yeah it's it seems white has has to waste another move uh, basically uh, Bishop g2 c4 is an issue we, we just just potentially just take here and then c4 being an issue so the bishop actually went back to e2 to try and lend support for that c4 but now after d4 what black has done is actually kind of get reverse Benoni structure look at that passive pawn there um, and yeah all it needs is a knight here later to torture it you know from c5 we get a reverse Benoni structure so black has got a very aggressive looking pawn structure here which fundamentally uh, gives an advantage from, from a structural point of view but on the other hand you might argue but white has the light square bishop black hasn't got the light square bishop is black weaker on the light squares here than a normal kind of baloney of, of course that's the case there's no um, yeah so but let's have a look e takes d4 c takes and you see that passive structure and it's actually difficult to attack d4 here so it's cementing a spatial advantage and here actually not only that with this pawn here it's immediately having tactical implications that black is actually threatening a6 to win the poor knight what is that knight doing on b5 so a miserable position for white here already uh, at move 16 for you know 2751 having this miserable position with this uh, reverse Benoni structure imposed on him and he's having to make room for the knight now to retreat back you might think well there's an upside to that if it can try and exert influence there so it's kicked to a3 miserable square but now just just like in the Benoni uh, c5 would be nice to torture d3 we see this a5 trying to soften the c5 square 
Uh, so this helps cement uh, black's positional advantage, actually. If a5 uh, is not played here, say black plays another move, um, it's it's not as I think this is the most effective way just to just to um, get that that c5 square. So um, you know a5 and white castled. Uh, if he plays b5, then here uh, mission accomplished knight d7 coming to c5, and there's no target on b6. You know, it's, it's hidden in prospect as an exploitable weakness because white's own pawn is blocking in, and that would be very very comfortable for white that position. So at least White tries to uh, have some pressure here, potentially on b6. So a takes, rook takes. So there's some pressure on b6. Queen d6, and the knight comes to uh, support that rook. And now we see this knight d7. So the knight is coming to c5. The queen is holding on here to d4 in the meantime. But now d4 is attacked with queen a1, and so it has to be protected. Uh, there's two ways actually. Knight c6 was plausible here, but actually e5 is also good. And as in the Benoni now, you see that um, potentially there's a flooding in the center of playing for e4 here already. If it wasn't for d4 dropping, this might have been a serious threat of d3 as a follow up. Uh, we see now white playing uh, the move f4 to try and undermine Black's pawn chain here in the center. Uh, if we if we look at this position, how miserable really is it? Let, let's say bishop f3 because it looks logical because black is without the line square bishop. Here, uh, move like rook a6, and to follow through with knight c5 means actually d3 is going to be weak again. So I think for that reason, it's it's pretty miserable here. Uh, this this sort of position looks just unpalatable. Uh, with black, <laughs> it's even going to play for e4 soon. Uh, so it looks unpalatable to do that. So hence this move, I think, f4, just trying to undermine uh, the pawn chain, f6. Now rook b5, so the knight is free to move now. Uh, putting some pressure on e5. Uh, we see now knight c5. And the a4 pawn is actually under fire here. Rook takes a4 as well after that as a tactical implication immediately. But white for the moment plays f takes. F takes. And perhaps here should have kept the rook's tension here with the rook on f8. Um, the engine move here is actually to play, to sort out the a pawn now. That's still a threat. Uh, black is still threatening. Rook takes a4. Maybe a5. This is the engine suggestion to sort out the poor a pawn. Uh, but even so, uh, this isn't hardly brilliant, you know, for white. This sort of position, if it was played, it's not entirely amazing. Uh, here, black still gets in this e4 at the end of it, which is horrible. Uh, you know, horrible looking. This this structure is even more of a, a space advantage and, and worry, uh, it seems. So anyway, so white actually. Uh, took on f8, but in doing so, he's got this rook on the queen side, and his king hasn't got too many pieces around it. It's only the bishop. So we see rook takes f8, and now a5 here with a big difference. This rook on f8 is like an attacking piece staring down the king. Uh, so these pieces are just not very uh, passive and happy with this structure. The poor Benoni structure has been imposed on on white. It should be you know for black to have that space. Disadvantage, not not for white to have, have got a reverse Benoni with such a miserable position with d3 weak with e4 on the cards. Um, here though, okay, black takes time to play b takes. After queen takes a5, it looks useful to hit c5, but now the queen is evicted powerfully with knight c6, a crucial tempo gain. Also reinforcing d4. So the queen is asked to leave. And uh, the queen actually goes to e1, so it looks as though that's hanging around defensively. But now comes in this very, very powerful move, very thematic looking, e4 here. Uh, white dare not take this in this position because the knight is now, you know, going to be forcing through d3. If if that wasn't played, knight b4 was played here. But if we look at this, this is just um, isn't it just losing d3? And it doesn't matter what we do here. Um, 
I think Queen D1 looks as though it should fell, for example. There's just D takes C2. We can queen here. If, if we lose, even if we lose a queen, we just queen there with a big advantage. So that's not possible to allow this position. Uh, so already with black space advantage, he's actually increasing the advantage. Now knight B4. And now even stronger maybe than taking the knight. And this, this is also very, very strong just to get on the F file. Black's position is so incredibly good here that actually knight takes b4 is is good. This wasn't played, but queen f6 here, what does, what does white do here? Even if black gives up the knight, this shows how strong the position is. This position here, apparently, this is like plus two for black. Uh, you can see why. They've got this horrible pawn here. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's a lost rook and pawn ending. But uh, even stronger than that, in this position, uh, instead of after night before, instead of taking here, Caruana just put more pressure even on d3. He plays knight e5, uh, and looking at d3 now, it's really horrible. And of course, the, the bishop's holding f3, otherwise, there'll be a nasty check coming into fault king and queen. Uh, so, white here is in a miserable position, absolutely miserable. Um, he plays actually d takes e4. Uh, what else? The, the engine suggests is actually queen d1 to try and hold the fort with d3. Look at all this misery surrounding d3. But here, black's got a huge advantage after e3. Talking after rook f2, you know, coming up with rook f2. This is just just lost. You know, knight d5, say rook f2, with the idea now uh, maybe of taking here, which is difficult to defend. Uh, very, very difficult to defend this position. For example, um, let's let's say this. Well, we take the rook with knight takes b. So, what does white actually do here? It's a totally miserable position. Uh, if here queen f8, yeah, black's just dominating the position here, and has got very concrete um, threats as well. Uh, so here, knight takes, and um, rook takes. Yeah, it's just it's just hopeless position that. Um, so this this position here, after knight e5, white played d takes e4 in this position instead of uh, anything else, queen d1. They're both nearly as miserable as each other. So d takes e4, and now this horrible d3 move. So not only creating the pass pawn instantly, but also giving access to d4 from the queen. So extremely miserable game. Uh, from, from Lenya's perspective, Lenya Domingue Perez's perspective, miserable because uh, now his king uh, safety just collapses after Bishop E1 check, and here gaining a tempo D2, and now Knight takes E4 with a huge threat of Rook F2 check. White's king safety is actually being shot to pieces here in this in this final position where White resigns, but. Um, yeah, the structural ambition for Fabiano Caruana, you know, the pawns of the soul of chess, Philidor. Look at the way Fa Fabiano, from the outset in the opening, managed to create a kind of reverse Benoni, uh, you know, s reverse son of sorrow structure, a sorrowful, sorrowful structure imposed on white with this very, very clever, perhaps underestimated system here that uh, he didn't seem to have any problems after just the positional sacrifice of weakening his dark squares. But, uh, you know, the tempo gains here, knight e5, um, the tempo gain here of giving up both bishops, basically, uh, this one. So, okay, white's only got the bishop, white well, hasn't got the bishop here or anything. But this position is so strong with, with tempo gains now on white's structure. Just white was forced into this horrible uh, structure where it's a bit like reverse baloney and there's an immediate problem tactically with the knight coming up so which has to be uh, solved in this position so white's forced to play another pawn move and then ends up weakening c5 so we even get more hallmarks of a baloney setup with d3 being tortured it's just it was just actually um poetry in motion i thought this game uh, because uh, it looks as though White really wasn't given any counterplay throughout the game. It seems as though 
Black's play was beautifully uh, thematic, absolutely beautifully thematic here in in the whole game. Um, a, a deviation here, I don't think this any deviation really helps. You know, e takes d3. We've always got this knight f3 business. So so e takes d4, and then just white's king just immediately felt the pressure here after knight takes e4. There's no real uh, defensive idea in this uh, final position. If knight c2, as an example, then check. It's just grotesque. Rook takes check. Rook e1 check. Uh, winning material. Uh, that, that's horrible. And threatening uh, rook g1 d1 here. So there's no time for taking here on e5. Um, this this is just plus 16 apparently this this position is yeah it's just a beautifully thematic game of what I show you so I hope you got something from that uh, I think for for players playing against the English opening I think this game represents a very very interesting idea for starting off symmetrically and waiting for the wet lettuce space advantage plan on the queen side you know a3 b4 but playing now b6 so playing like this fantastic idea and I can't wait to try and use this in my own games. I don't know about you guys. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.